Hey guys, Justin here with from Penguin Nation, and uh, I got requests to do uh, some of live duels with my um, oh, some duels with my uh, pure orcas deck. So I uh, changed the build like a little bit. I added some Call by the Grace to the build because I was losing uh, to Lancia and testing more. So I added Call by the Grace to make sure that that would help with that. I cut um, the one for one, and I also cut one return. And the side, then I also changed the Dark Rulers to mind controls and I swapped a twin in the pancreatops. Also a new addition to the extra deck is uh, I added a barricade board blocker. Uh, it's a very very good uh, card. If I open say for instance instant fusion or um, instant fusion scrap recycler and harp I can then make barricade board blocker and pitch the harp if they stop my scrap recycler. And I ended up cutting the orchestra for it. So everything else the deck's the same so let's get right into it. Okay guys, we're back, and we I'm here uh, in the first duel, this is my opening hand, and I'm playing against uh, Pure Thunders. I won the roll, so I elect to Talos to go first, and I will explain the plays as the replay goes through. Summon Scrap, Pitch Gal, Gal Summon Nightmare, so I'm going to go for the Wand Nightmare play. Uh, pitch Wand, Revive, Shuffle Back Wand, uh, Set Return. Uh, I chose to Set Return instead of Babel because I had uh, Nibiru in my hand, and if I use all the... Um, Dark effects I'll be locked into it and can't use Nibiru that turn. Yes, I am aware of the ruling where I can banish something, uh, I can activate Nibiru then chain to it and then keep Nibiru in my hand, but this way I can gather more resources because I'm not gonna die because I have Nibiru and Gizmeka Rochi. So I ended setting return, setting a card, attaching, and then just passing with the regular board. Went solar, I uh, impair, and you went lure, he makes Kaminari, add fusion. Gold Strike Matrix at Matrix. Uh, he ended up choosing to play around Nibiru because his Titan was his fourth summon, so I couldn't Nibiru him in the end, um, which is completely fine. So then he did like Thunder Dragon, Chain Titan, Thunder Dragon, Chain Titan, uh, killed my uh, Dengirisu. And the end phase, I choose Orochi. I use Orochi's effect to pop Kaminari. He revives, uh... oh, he revives his. Um... Guy, I choose to go straight into Gal and then Ding because he has to choose to pop my Gal with the Titan, but he ended up not doing that. So then I ended up flooding the field and then boosting my monster and then swinging for game, all while playing around Nibiru. So he starts with Desires, I Ash Blossom, Solar, which is fine. Rhoda, he Lancias me. So uh, now that he Lancias me. I can't uh, effectively make another board, so I might control in the normal summon harp. He should have waited until I summon armor get a knight to Lancia, but he didn't for some reason. Which I don't mind, because now I could just go straight into Galdang. Which is what I end up doing here. And I send his set Dynamishkas, which he can't use because he's under Lancia. So now it's his go. He banishes top tech duo, pretty good. At Hawk, Hawks back his. Oh, he has desires too. So his is pretty nice. And then he hawks back his uh, dark, gets Colossus. I elect to let my Dengirsu die, that way his duo can't use its effect to search. So I just let it die and I'm going to take the damage. Which is fine. Okay, next turn now, he plays around Nibiru, doesn't push this. He uh, ashes my harp and then I use Nightmare to send my symbol, get my uh, babble. I have to make Ding to send off duo because duo has this other effect to add back from the banish to the top of your deck. So you could have top deck something you wanted. I, he's gonna get the trigger to do it anyway this turn, so I just let whatever monster dies. For some reason, he just chooses to pass with this board. Go Recycler, send Wand, Wand, Revive, Harp. Make both in the Gal, Gal, Shuffle back, Wand, set Crescendo. That's irrelevant. We're gonna make Unicorn to spin back the Colossus, and now I can go for a game here. I return, draw to instant, take the um, duo, and then I make Bomber. Bomber switches to 3000, he's at 24, I choose the Nightmare and Damage stuff, and that way I can symbol and then revive my uh, Dengir Super game. So that's it for deal number one, it was against Thunders. Okay, for deal number two, I played against Salamagre, I uh, won the roll again. Uh, so we're gonna go off, I use Recycler, Pitch Harp, Harp Summon out Nightmare, Gals and Dang, do the, I'm going for the one play again. But this time I'm getting Babel, because I have Crescendo in my hand, not Return. So it's all dependent on your hand, like I said. So I have cr uh, Crescendo live, so he goes, uh, Sign at mining, I let him add his gazelle, but I, I don't want to negate the sign at mine in case he already had gazelle in his hand. So it would just been a waste with uh, my crescendo. He drops, he uses 
Gazelle's effect on field and I negate it. He will summon Sunlight Wolf. And then I didn't summon back when he makes his reincarnated Sunlight Wolf in order to send it to Gear. So now all he has is Bailing and Jag. And here he's going to make a, a few misplays. He's going to link both into Phoenix. I'm going to negate the Phoenix and he's going to swing into my Gal, but then he forgets that my Gal T is boosted from my Nightmare, sending the symbol. So now he's, he dies and phase. I shuffle, set a card. Didn't do this earlier with my Galatea. I harp, I summon out Nightmare, and now I'm going to make Boral Sword and then just attack for game. Essentially, because he can't effectively stop it. So he scoops. Go to the next game. He, for some reason, he played him Spectreboard and Salamander. I don't know what that's about. But anyway, I went some of my Pancratos, I decided normal Bombard, and, and now I'm uh, proceeding to push. Bombard attack, do some damage. Now I'm going to go to main phase 2. I'm trying to play around Lantia here. So he doesn't have the Lantia, so it's fine. So now I got to play around Nibiru. So then this is now my fifth summon. I go shuffle, set return, harp, summon out nightmare, uh, make ding attach. He chooses not to Nibiru here for some reason. I link both now into Galatea, and then now I send, I try to send target. He Nibiru's me here, which is fine. Cause now I already have my grave full of stuff. Um, I target the token, now I send Symbol, so now Symbol can still revive. I revive Gal now, and then I return, send those two off. I use Wand, revive Symbol, then I make Unicorn just to clear the Nibiru, pitching the Gizmet because it's a free send. Now my hand's comfortable enough that I went for return because I had the Ash and Cosmic in hand, so I have the stop for Will and Sanctuary, and I also have Ash to stop any of his kickback plays. So he has only three cards in hand, so I effectively have two stops while not being able to die because my grave is loaded with resources. So that's why I chose to make this play like I did. So now it's his go. And he summons Buffalo, pretty good card. Bailinx, uh, he's gonna trigger on chain, add Sanctuary, and then pitch uh, Foxy draw. Uses Wilds Effect. I chained a Wilds Effect, not the activation, obviously, because I want to clear it and not let him use another will. Banish it. Make Sanctuary. Foxy Revive. Sure, Kyber Triggers, because he summoned. And now he has one card in hand. So I don't really care what that card is, essentially. He's going to make um, Stalio. Stalio's effect is going to summon. I'm going to Ash here. And now he effectively has no other plays. He's going to bounce. My unicorn and then kill the token because the token is very weak. But on the kickback turn, uh, he has nothing. So I'm going to attempt to kill him. So in the end phase, I'm going to Orochi. He has one card in hand. He didn't use it at all. So I assume it's a hand trap. So in my turn, I uh, don't use Gizmix effect because there's no point. I symbol target Galatea. Galatea effect. So this is my first summon, shuffle back wand, get okay, Babel, put Babel, Harp, this is my second summon. Now this is my third summon into Boral Sword. Target the Boral Swords and Wand, so now it's at 3800. So now I only made three summons, so you can't new brew me. The sword's gonna swing for 38. I'm going to summon Gizmex Smack over it. It's going to do enough damage even if he bailings us. And this is going to swing for more than 38 directly for game. And just as I predicted, he's going to reveal in his hand that he has Nibiru. And then he's going to proceed to scoop. But you have to effectively play around Nibiru with this deck. Otherwise, you're just going to get blown out. But yeah, he just reveals to me he has Nibiru. And then I uh, win the match from there. So uh, we're going to head to game three. Uh, those are two meta decks which I uh, played against, but I want to show you how I play versus a back row deck with this deck. I played against Paleozoix, and I went first, I opened Babel, I was going to play the Babel first to play around DD Crow, some stuff like that. I have to Gizmek Orochi off the rip, I make Galatea, and then he pretty much lets the standard combo go through Harp, Summon Symbol, Shuffle, I'm going to get Return, because I want resources and I have a Nightmare in hand. 
after another return, unfortunately. But now my hand's pretty nice because I got Nibiru Impermanence. So if it's Salomon, great. Like, I'm not going to care. If it's Thunder, I'm not going to care. If it's the Mirror, I'm not really going to care because my Gary's going to be loaded. And I already have Babel. So I don't know what I'm playing against at this moment. So I'm like, dang, attach. I'm like putting my resources in such a way that if he Nibiru's me and my grave's already full with everything, that I really wouldn't care like when he Nibiru's me. So now I link those two into Galatea. Set my Imperm Pass. Ends up being for uh, Paleo. So you summon a swap and then I uh, revive my Dengirsu and I send off the uh, Swap Frog. Shuffle, set like Crescendo on his turn. Uh, the reason why I negated the swap then sent it is because he could bounce it back for cost and if he had a water he got to use it. He had Demise, which this is obviously a water monster because he didn't set it. So the way I played it was very correctly. He's going to set everything let the Duke go to Grave. And phase I'm going to Orochi. So now I have to play in a very pivoting point to play around back. So I'm going to flood my field with monsters. Return, send two, draw two. Then I'm just going to swing, and he has to like stop this play, because this is just game on board showing. So this way now, if you play something random like Drowning Mirror Force, I guess I get punished, right? If he crack down to my dang, I'm like, mm, okay. So he takes the dang, I swing with this, uh, Orochi. He's like, okay, so this is important. My guy, remember I have Nightmare, so in the damage step I can send something to boost my Gizmek Orochi. So damage step I use my Nightmare, I target uh, Orochi. Uh, so it seems that seems like the correct play, but then he chooses to Solemn Strike Ghost, and now my Rochi dies, obviously. Um, so now I'm in for his two. I, I, by the way, guys, I banished both my symbols. If you're wondering, like, about these plays, the, uh, the face time banish er, it has both my symbols in it, so I have to play this game without symbols. So we're slowly grinding it out. I'm using an uh, effect to send, he imperms it, and I'm like. Okay, I still have my Crescendo live. I'm trying never to use my Crescendo because I'm trying to save it for a very crucial point when I have Grim. Because he has no cards. He just has Crackdown and two unknowns, basically. So if I hold a Crescendo, I'm going to be fine. So I'm just flooding my field and then have Ash for a kickback demise. I also have Ash for like swap. So he trap tricks his own face and he, uh. He slightly misplays here. He should have a uh, Heavy Storm Duster in my end phase. Because forcing me then to, to pop everything because the thing was already impermanent, so I couldn't save the cards. Yet he chose not to heavy storm duster, so he's gonna try and storm duster now, which I'm just gonna protect with Dengirsu now, which is his misplay. He should have done it during my end phase, that way I couldn't have uh, protected them, and I would have had to use Crescendo then. So now my go, he has one new set, one unknown set. He still has Ding, but I took found a way to clear the Ding. So I send wand, wand, summon out, harp, and then I'm just like. Filling around with the stuff, trying to play around his back or Canadius. I try to uh, crescendo it and judgment. So now all of his cards are known, all he has is a crack now. So I'm like, okay. So he sets that. I feel comfortable now just pushing a board because I have my ash in hand, a normal one of the ashes. I, uh, I made a slight mess up there. I'm supposed to make a unicorn here, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, so I make unicorn here. I pitch the Nibiru because it's pretty much useless at this point. Spin back the Crackdown and I get back my Dengirsu. So he just scoops because there's like no out to this essentially. Okay, next game. Uh, he elects to go first because he's a trap deck. So the way my hand is, is that I have to just play on him opening frog combo. So there's no point in me imperming this because then he could just bounce for cost. Normal send Ronin, make Toad and still have Toad. So if they have special frog, the only way to stop it is with Ogre. But this deck doesn't play over, obviously. So he sends that, summons back Ronin. And then he chooses to make totally awesome. And then he sets two passes. So now in my turn, in the draw phase, I'm gonna use Impermanent to target the uh, Toad. The reason why I do it in draw phase is that way he doesn't get a free frog off of this. And if he chooses to negate and take my Impermanent, it doesn't matter. So I'm just gonna let him go. He's gonna think and he's gonna let it go through. So now standby phase, he's just gonna detach a cost. But now at this point I pretty much win because I'm just gonna twin both his back row and then he's gonna concede because I have Greffer and Nightmare, which he doesn't know I have in hand, which I don't know why he just scooped, but I just won from that point on. Okay, hopefully this gave you guys better insight of uh, how I use this deck and stuff and like what 
I do to play around certain cards. The card I respect the most usually is Nibiru, and I usually try to play around it very effectively with Babylon, my own Nibiru, or Returns. If you guys like this dual system where I show you replays of the decks I play, let me know down in the comments. Uh, my next video is probably going to be about the impact IP Masquerade has on the new format. And I'm probably going to do that. And then I'm going to have an interview with Larry Musgrove about his thoughts on Salmon Great post uh, Chaos Impact. So stay tuned for that, guys. Uh, like always, uh, thank you for the support. And be sure to like and subscribe. This is Justin with from Penguin Nation. See you guys.